Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be covering ER model topic in DBMS. I will explain what is ER model and then I will explain what is an entity, types of entities, attributes, types of attributes, relationship and types of relationships. And at last, I will explain what is entity set, attribute set and relationship set. Guys, I have uploaded complete DBMS subject tutorials. I will provide link in description. You can watch from there. If you are watching this video for the first time, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. At first, I will explain what is ER model. In ER model, E stands for entity and R stands for relationship. Guys, this ER model is nothing but it is simply a diagram. I will give one simple real life example. For example, I want to construct house. So, I will go to builder. Whenever I go to builder, that builder will collect all my requirements like how many rooms I want size of each room and where to locate hall, where to locate kitchen. This builder will collect all my requirements. After collecting all my requirements, he will draw one diagram and then he will show me how my house will look like after construction. By seeing the diagram, if I say OK, then this builder will start actual construction. So in same way, for example, I am college owner. I want to construct one database for my college. So I will go to software company. In each and every software company, there will be a database designer. The main duty of this database designer is to draw ER diagrams. So this database designer will collect all my requirements and then he will design one ER diagram. After designing ER diagram, this database designer will submit this ER diagram to database developer. Then by seeing this ER diagram, this database developer will start developing actual database. For example, this is my simple ER diagram which is created by database designer like student. Guys, this student is an entity will represent entity in rectangle. For example, students contain some properties like name, rule number and section. And we call these properties as attributes. And we will represent attributes in ellipse. For example, this is simple diagram which is designed by database designer. By seeing this diagram, this database developer will design one table like guys entity is nothing but table. So this database developer will create student table. Guys attributes are nothing but columns. So total there are three columns. So one column is name. Next column is rule number and next column is section. Guys, this is simple diagram which is designed by database designer. Then by seeing this diagram, database developer will create actual table in database software. This is simple definition of ER model. ER diagrams are used to represent the ER model in a database, which makes them easy to be converted into relations. ER model is nothing but it is simply a ER diagram. And by seeing this diagram, we can easily create tables. We also call tables as relations. People those who don't have any knowledge can also design ER diagrams. People those who don't have any knowledge on database is known as Nave users. Even Nave users can design these ER diagrams. These are various symbols that we use in ER model. On the first one is rectangle. Rectangle is used to represent entities. Entities are nothing but table names. And next one is ellipse. By using ellipse, we can represent attribute. Attributes are nothing but column names. If you want to establish relationship between two entities, then we need to use this diamond symbol. Diamond symbol is used to represent relationship. And next one is line. We can connect all this by using line. Double ellipse is used to represent multi-valued attributes. I'll give examples. And next one is double rectangle. This double rectangle is used to represent weak entity. These are three components in ER model. And the first one is entity. Guys, entity is nothing but table name. Guys, entity is nothing but it is an object or thing that exists in real world. For example, car. We can create car table. We can create pen table, we can create student table, we can create faculty table and so on. So this car, pen, students all are entities. And we will represent entities by using rectangle. And there are two types of entities. One is tangible entity and next one is intangible entity. Physical object which we can touch or see is known as tangible entity. For example, if you consider mobile, we can touch mobile phone and as well as we can see mobile phone. And if you consider students, we can touch students and also we can see students. We can touch and see cars, bikes, so on. So objects which we can touch or see is known as tangible entity. And next one is intangible entity. Intangible entity mean objects which we cannot touch or see. For example, if you consider bank account entity, we cannot touch this bank account because it is present in computer. So objects which we cannot touch physically is known as intangible entity. For example, bank account. Entities are of two types. They are strong entity and weak entity. Entities that contains primary key is known as strong entity. Entity is nothing but table name. For example, I created student entity. This student entity contains attributes like 
name, rule number, section and age. Attributes are nothing but column names. And we need to represent attributes in ellipse. So inside ellipse, I written name, rule number, section, age. For example, if you consider rule number, we cannot give same rule number for two different students. So definitely we need to give different rule numbers for different students. So primary key must contain unique values and it will not accept null values. Null is nothing but empty. So definitely we need to give rule number for each and every student and it will not accept null values. Null is nothing but empty value. And we will represent primary key attribute with underline symbol. So I'm using underline symbol. So if any entity contains primary key attribute, then we call it as strong entity. An entity that does not contain primary key attribute is known as weak entity. If you consider this example, this example, there is no primary key attribute. So in this student entity, there is no primary key attribute. So we call this student entity as weak entity. And we will represent weak entity in double rectangle. So inside double rectangle, I written student. Next, I will explain attributes and types of attributes. An attribute is a property or characteristics of an entity. Properties of an entity is known as attribute. Guys, attributes are nothing but column names. For example, if you consider student is an entity, this student can contain various attributes like name, rule number and date of birth. Not only three, you can give any number of attributes and one of the attribute is considered as primary key. Whenever you give primary key for any particular attribute, then this attribute will contain only unique values. You cannot give same values. For example, if you give name Sai, rule number 21 and date of birth 1997. For another student, for example, Raju, here already I given rule number 21. So again, you should not give rule number 21. So you need to give different values like 22 and next to 23 for another student and so on. And also this primary key attribute will not accept null values. For example, there is one student like Rajesh, date of birth for example 2000. And here I don't want to give rule number. So what I will do is I will just write null. But whenever you give primary key for any particular attribute, then it will not accept null values. So definitely you need to give any number and we will represent attributes in ellipse. This is ellipse symbol. We need to write attributes inside ellipse. And whereas for entities, we need to use rectangle. Entity is nothing but table name. Attributes are nothing but column names. These are various types of attributes. I will explain each and every attribute by giving example. First one is simple attribute. Attribute that cannot be subdivided into another component is known as simple attribute. I'll give an example. For example, there is student entity. In this student entity, there are some attributes like name, rule number and date of birth and also there is address. If you observe these attributes, I am not subdividing this. Just I written name, rule number, date of birth, address. I am not subdividing. So we call it as simple attributes. And next one is composite attributes. Attributes that can be subdivided into another components is known as composite attributes. Same example. For example, if you consider name attribute, now I am subdividing this name attribute like first name and last name. I subdivided this name attribute into two components. They are first name and last name. So we call this name attribute as composite attribute. We cannot subdivide rule number and we cannot subdivide date of birth. But we can subdivide address like state, pin code, street and door number. So we call this address attribute as composite attributes. Attributes which we can subdivide into another component is known as composite attributes. And next one is single valued attribute. Attribute that contains only single values is known as single valued attribute. For example, if you consider rule number, we can give only one rule number to particular student. And for example, if you consider date of birth, we can only give one date of birth. This rule number attribute and date of birth attribute. These both are examples of single valued attributes. Next, I will explain multi valued attributes. Attribute that contains multiple values is known as multi valued attribute. For example, if you consider mobile number, we can give multiple mobile numbers. And for example, if you consider Gmail ID, one student can contain multiple Gmail IDs. So this Gmail ID and mobile number, these both are examples of multi-valued attributes. That means we can give multiple values. And definitely we need to represent multi-valued attributes in double ellipse. So inside double ellipse, I need to write mobile number. And inside double ellipse, I need to write Gmail ID. And next one is derived attribute. Guys, for example, for student, I given date of birth 1997, for example. And now I want to calculate age. If you want to calculate age of particular student, then definitely we need date of birth. Based on date of birth and present year, we can calculate age. So indirectly, this age attribute depends on date of birth attribute. So if any attribute depends on another attribute, then we call that attribute as derived attribute. And we need to represent derived attribute in dotted ellipse. 
This is dotted ellipse. So this age attribute is derived attribute because this attribute depends on date of birth attribute. And last one is key attribute. Key attribute is nothing but primary key. For example, if you consider this rule number attribute, just I'm giving underline. That means we call it as key attribute. Whenever you give primary key for any particular attribute, then definitely we need to give different rule numbers for different students. And also it will not accept null values. These are various types of attributes. Next I will explain what is relationship. A relationship represents the association between entities. For example, there is student entity and there is course entity. I want to establish relationship between these two entities. As we know, student will enroll in course. So I will connect these two entities by establishing enrolled in relationship. We will represent relationship in rhombus or you can also call it as diamond symbol. For example, there is faculty entity and there is department entity. Faculty will work for department. So we can establish work for relationship. For example, there is customer entity and there is product entity. Now I want to establish relationship between this customer and product. As we know, customer will buy product. So I'm establishing buys relationship. In this way, by using relationship, you can establish relationship between entities. These are various types of relationships. And the first one is unary relationship. The name itself says unary mean one. If only single entity is participating in relationship, then we call it as unary relationship. For example, there is person entity. As we know, person will marry to person. So I'm establishing marry to relationship. So we call it as unary relationship. And next one is binary relationship. Binary mean two. If two entities are participating in relationship, then we call it as binary relationship. These are examples. And next one is ternary relationship. Ternary mean three. If three entities are participating in relationship, then we call it as ternary relationship. For example, student enrolled in course and as well as faculty enrolled in course. So this enrolled in relationship is ternary relationship. These are various types of relationships. Next I will explain what is entity set, attribute set and relationship set. Set is nothing but collection of elements. At first I will explain what is entity set. Entity is nothing but table name and we will represent entity using rectangle. So for example, this is student entity. If this student entity contains only single record, for example, name Sai, rule number 21 and age 25, for example. If this entity contains only single record, then we call it as entity. For example, if this entity contains multiple records like name Shiva, rule number 22, age 26, Raju, rule number 23 and age 18. If this entity contains multiple records, then we call this entity as entity set. Entity set is nothing but collection of entities. This is one entity, this is one entity and this is one entity. So collection of entities is known as entity set. Next I will explain what is attribute set. For example, if you consider this name attribute, I am subdividing this name attribute into first name, middle name and last name. Now this name attribute contains set like first name, middle name and last name. So we call this name attribute as attribute set. Attribute set is nothing but collection of attributes. So we can also call this composite attribute as attribute set. And next I will explain what is relationship set. For example, there are two entity sets. One is student entity set and next one is course entity set. For example, I want to create one separate table for enrolled in relationship. For that purpose, we need to select two keys from these two entities. Here I will select rule number and here I will select CID. In this relationship table, there are multiple relationships. So we call it as relationship set. As in exam, you may get question like explain entity set types and relationship set types. So whenever that question comes in exam, you can write the same answer. Next, I will explain what is dominant entity and subordinate entity. For example, let us consider there are two entities. One is loan entity and next one is payment entity. Entity is nothing but table name. I am connecting these two entities by establishing loan payment relationship. Person who has loan will do payments. So, if there is no loan entity, there will not be payment entity. For example, I deleted loan entity. If I delete loan entity, then automatically payment entity also gets deleted. So we call this loan entity as dominant entity and whereas we call this payment entity as subordinate entity.